Hey Tuesday Nighters! Hope all is doing wonderful and having an amazing day today. Hope your day was awesome in the Lord. Hope it was great. Hope it was grand. Hope it was spectacular. Everything your hearts can stand. I hope it was for you. As you can see, we're shaking things up just a little bit. We're outside in the great, beautiful nature. <laughs> Oh, as I mature, um, I am just appreciating the more and the more and the more of what God has created. You know, I remember there was a time where I didn't like to be out in nature, you know, but um, it's beautiful, you know, because we, for me, I can connect with God even the more, you know, it's just another way to connect with God. So, but nonetheless, we're shaking things up just a little bit today. And so, um, we're here to welcome everyone to our Tuesday night. And so tonight we're going to be discussing, let not my heart be offended. Notice, let not my heart be offended. Notice that we are actually speaking to our own personal hearts. Let not my heart be offended. Because many times our hearts can be very offended. Tonight we're going to talk about the heart being offended by truth why is our heart offended by truth you know truth is good you know truth is there to help us as long as truth is not coming as a dagger you know and, and many times many of us have experienced where truth was like a dagger you know it's like this is truth and I'm gonna stuff it down your throat I'm gonna stuff it in your face well let's be a little bit more specific let's 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 talk about our hearts be offended as it relates to biblical truth God's truth you know and so we understand that everything that God is 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 allowing is for our good and that our heart should not be offended at biblical truth, the truth of God. It should not be offended. When it comes to following the principles of God, as it relates to what we have surrendered, you know, we've surrendered our hearts to God. And so as we're surrendering our hearts to God, it is a learning and it is a growing process. I want you to understand that tonight, that it is a growing process. I don't want you to be uh, frustrated with yourselves because your growth may not look like someone else's growth, you know, or where they are, you know, you don't look that way in, in your spiritual walk. I want you to, to not be offended even by that, not be intimidated by that, but I want you to understand that as you have decided, I am surrendering completely and totally to God. Okay. Know that yes, it is a process. It is a process because you got to remember coming from years and years and years of not being surrendered. Now we're coming into the place where we are being surrendered. It's going to take some time to unlearn some things. It's going to take some time to untangle and to undo some things. And we have to be patient with ourselves and be okay with that. Amen. As long as we continue, 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 continue. Don't stop and don't give up, but continue. The, the enemy will like nothing more than for you to give up because he don't want you surrender. Surrender? What? Growing, maturing, being all God has called you to be? Absolutely not. But the devil doesn't get his way. He don't have, he don't have a, what they call it, a win in this fight or whatever they call it. But he, he, he is irrelevant. Hallelujah. To your journey. He is irrelevant to my journey. Hallelujah. But God is relevant. God is who we are aiming to please. So as we're talking tonight about let not our hearts be offended. Many times our heart can be offended if we're not careful by the truth. It can be offended by the word of God. It can be offended because I'm so used to doing this this way or I'm so used to doing this that way. And when I hear it, and when I know it's the truth, and when I know this is what God is saying to me, if we're not careful, we will allow the lies of the enemy to sneak in, because that's exactly what it is, to sneak in and to tell us, that person is just saying this because of that. Or that person is saying this. No, no, no. Those are lies. Those are lies. When it is the truth of God, it is the word of God. It is there to help us. It's not there to hurt us. It's not there to offend us. It's there to make us better, to grow us, to mature us even the more. You know, we know in the fivefold ministry, we are being trained. We are being equipped and we're getting great teaching. 
you know? And so even with that, we got to understand that everything, you know, in our process, everything that we have learned is not going to be okay. There are going to be things that we have to be okay with, with unlearning, with saying, okay, this is where I am. And I see this is where God wants me to be. So I got to surrender myself more. I got to do what I have to do to now change the behavior now change the action of what I was doing so that it can look like God. It can look the way it's supposed to. We have to be okay. We can't be offended. We're going to see tonight how the Pharisees was offended with the truth. You know, but Jesus was okay with that because the truth was still the truth. The truth still stood and Jesus still spoke the truth. But the question is, how will we perceive? How will we accept the truth? The truth, the truth helps us to see ourselves. The truth helps us to grow. It does. It does. You know, it's just like when we're exercising and we're, we're not used to using certain muscles. Ooh, I can be a witness. We're not used to using certain muscles and now we're, you know, we're training these muscles and we're, you know, we're retraining. We're, we're moving that muscle from a place of lag to now a place of strength. You know, and, and, and you feel the burn. And even afterwards, you're like, oh, I know some weights have been there. <laughs> some training has been there. Hallelujah. And it's no different in the spirit realm. There are things where the truth wants to strengthen us. The truth wants us to become better. It wants us to become stronger and strengthened and matured in Christ. The truth helps us to get out of us what doesn't need to be there. Hallelujah. It gets out of us. What does it need to be there? The Bible says in John 8 and 32, I think it is. It says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You know, so, you know, many times, even when our leaders are correcting us, our leaders are sharing, you know, and teaching, we have to submit to that. We have to surrendering means surrendering and submitting completely. Completely completely not being offended hallelujah because it's not there to offend us it's there to help us it's here it's there to grow us so i just want to encourage you tonight don't let the enemy make your heart be offended it is there to grow you it is there to strengthen you it is there to mature you it's there to mature you hallelujah but jesus wants our hearts to be humbled as his hearts were humbled and when we look at humble, you know, it's so major, it's so major, because many of us may already be there. We may already be in humble land. We may live in humble city, but for many other of us, you know, it's a process, and, and we're working. We're a work in process, a work in progress. Hallelujah. And as, as long as you keep going, you keep, you know, checking yourselves. You know, uh, one lady at church we used to pastor, um, uh, Miss Brenda, she would say, I have to take myself to the understanding room. And sometimes we have to do, many times we have to do that, you know. In other words, we have to sit ourselves down and have a conference with ourselves and say, Self, uh-uh, you're not finna be offended. You're not finna be upset. You're not finna be mad. You're not finna be feeling some kind of way. You're not finna suck your teeth. You're not finna do none of that. Because your leaders are here to help you. And God is speaking through our leaders hallelujah to help us to train us to teach us to equip us and it's not going to always feel good amen but growing up and being mature is okay with that it's like yes yeah, okay you know i felt that i felt that you know i felt the burn we exercise i feel the burn hallelujah but we should want the burn because that burn is helping us when i feel the burn we're doing them weights and and, and, and getting muscle in these arms Woo, I feel the burn. It's like, ouch, but you got to keep going. Finish the reps. Finish the process. Hear what is being said and apply it to our lives. Don't just hear it and let it just whoop go off the top of our head and then we're hungry for the next word. No, what are we doing with the word we just got? What are we doing with what God has just said through our leaders over here? Hallelujah. What did the Pharisees do with what Jesus was saying to them? They, first of all, didn't believe. They couldn't receive. They couldn't hear. Hallelujah. They didn't want to receive the message of Jesus. They didn't even want to receive him. 
But if we be like that, we will not be able to receive truth. We will not be able to be changed. We'll be in a place of pride. We will live in pride city instead of humble city. Hallelujah. But today, now, this hour, this revival, hallelujah, that is our end time revival. This is our lifestyle now lifestyle change. We want to live in humble city. We've lived long enough in pride city. Thank you, Father. But we want to live and remain in humble city and not just being humble because someone is looking. Mm -mm. We want to live there in humble city because this pleases God. This is the way of God because this is how God is. This is how Jesus is. And we want to be like him. We say it. We sing it. But we got to do it. Hallelujah. And the only way we can do it is not in ourselves. Mm -mm. We have to say, God, as I surrender to you, you know, help me. And then we got to help God help us. <laughs> because let's just say, for example, there was a truth that came. We'll just say from a leader. There's a truth that came from our leader. And it was a truth that was like, ooh, that kind of stung a little bit. You know, we had a choice at that crossroad. We have a choice. <laughs> that was the unit that came on. But we have a choice to either decide, I am going to ooh, receive all of this truth or I'm going to be offended. If we'll be offended, I want you to understand you're opening the door to pride. But if we humble ourselves and receive this, say, God, this is good for me. You know, this is this is truth and, and, and all things that you do are for my good. I want the good. I want you want the best. And I know that as I receive this, I, I'm now responsible to change the behavior. So now as we help God help us, as we go forward now, now we have to decide when, when we're at that crossroad, either I'm going to accept or I'm not. We choose to accept the truth. Now we have to, we have to deal with the behavior. Now we got to deal with what we're feeling. We got to deal with that action. We got to deal with that trigger. Come on. And we got to be like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. So we got to recognize the enemy for who he is and what he's doing. Many times we've been crossing it up and thinking that it was us. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's the devil. Hallelujah. And so, you know, we have to decide, okay, I'm taking this truth. I'm taking it in. Not only am I taking it in, I am applying it. Thank you, Father. That's how we're helping God help us. He's bringing it to us. He's showing us. But we have free will. Thank you, Father. And so now what we have to do is we have to, God, help me to change this behavior. Help me in this thing. As I'm lifting those weights and I'm, and I'm, I'm exercising these muscles, that thing hurt, that thing stings. But you keep going. Hallelujah. You hear the voice of the Lord, even in the gym saying, keep going. Keep going. Come on. Finish your rep. Finish your rep. Finish your process. Hallelujah. Because God is testing us so that we can pass to the next level. He can get us to the greater. Come on. We said in the beginning of the year, this is the year of our promise. Our promise is coming. It's not just a saying. This is what God said. This is the year of our promise. And if we're going to walk over into promised land, there's some things that God has to, has to finish processing us through. There's some more testing. We got to be okay with that. Hallelujah. I want to even go on to say that in this life, they're gonna be, we're living a life full of testing. Because we're going from level to level to level. We're going from grace to grace to grace in God. Hallelujah. We don't ever want to stay on level five, stay on level 10. No, we want to go every level there is to go in this life. We want to pass the last test so we can get to the next one. And then we want to pass this test so, so we can get to the next one. Thank you, Lord. That's what we want to do. Thank you, Father. So as we're letting our hearts be humbled like Jesus, you know, we see that the Pharisees, you know, they were not humbled and they were just haughty and prideful and so full of themselves and wasn't hearing, wasn't believing, wasn't seeing and didn't want to and didn't want to. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And so even in the midst of that, you know, as we have just Sunday, you know, it was Resurrection Sunday. Oh my goodness. Woo, so amazing. You know, this year Resurrection has it, just been different for me. You know, I just see things so differently, you know, and, and that's because we're in a different space. I'm sure that's, you probably feel the same way because we're in a, we're in a new space. Hallelujah. Revival is now and we're, we're in this new space and our eyes are coming open even the more, you know, where we can appreciate what Jesus has done on the cross. We appreciate God for sending his son, you know, but the Pharisees couldn't appreciate that. They couldn't appreciate who they had right there before them. You know, we know Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, and Jesus went on, you know, he, he lived, he had life and death, and he was resurrected, you know, but it wasn't until after that many said, that was the Messiah, you know? But look at, look at what you had, and you took it for granted. Look at what you had, and you didn't cherish. Look at what you had, and you didn't treasure. Look at what you had, and you didn't value what you had. Can I say to you, we need to value our leaders. We need to value the God in our leaders. Hallelujah. Especially leaders who you know are following God. You know who are following God. We have to value the vessels that are right there before us. That God has placed there. Hallelujah. Where God has planted us. That leader, that leadership, we have to value. Because if we're not valuing it, if we're not treasuring, you know, what God has placed here for us, the truth, the word, the miracles, the sign, the wonder, all that is coming through this vessel that God has placed. Our leaders, just as Jesus was that leader and the Pharisees could not receive, they couldn't, they would not treasure, they would not value. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. It was there. He was there for the Pharisees just like he was there for everybody else. You had many, so many that received him. And you had many that didn't. We don't want to be among the ones that don't receive Jesus. We don't want to be among the ones that don't receive the vessels that God has placed here. Hallelujah. Trust what God is saying through our vessels. Through the vessels of God. That is valuing God when we value God's vessel. Hallelujah. And we're valuing, yes, we're valuing the God in the vessel. We, we're valuing, we trust in the vessel. We're trusting what they're saying, that it's coming from God. Because, and if, if, let me tell you this, and how you measure that is, are you growing? Do you see your life changing? Do you see your life being transformed? Are you seeing miracles and signs and wonders and being healed and delivered? Has your relationship grown? That's how you measure. That's how you know. So, in that place, you want to honor. You want to, you want to, you want to enjoy and, and receive and value who God has placed here. We want to value and receive who God has placed here as Jesus was, as the Pharisees did. Hallelujah. But we don't want to let our hearts be offended. Hallelujah. Because our vessels are not here just to tell us what we want to hear. Jesus didn't come to tell the Pharisees what they wanted to hear. Jesus didn't come to tell any of us what we wanted to hear. He came to give us the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And it's up to us what's on the inside of us that accepts it or not what's on the inside especially what's on the inside of us that decides not to accept it that's the question what is on the inside of us that causes us not to accept the truth not to be offended hallelujah how dare you say this to me how dare you imply this how what but how are we going to grow if we're not hearing the truth? It's enough of these mamsy pamsy messages. It's enough of this soft stroking, soft pedaling. No, give me the truth. I love truth. I want truth. If I'm wrong, I want to know it so I can change it. Hallelujah. Not in my own might. Hallelujah. But in the might and the power of God, we hear the truth. 
We embrace the truth. We take this truth back to God and we say, God, this is, this is what I received. Hallelujah. And, and, and I need you to help me with this. Because if you're bringing this to me, then it needs to be dealt with. Thank you, Father. Because if we don't deal with it, it's going to continue to deal with us. For many of us, you know, many spirits of pride and, and arrogance and jealousy and, you know, competition and all these things have been dealing with us for all these years. Now, truth be told, truth be told, you know, many of that came from probably childhood and things that have gone on and it just grew up in us, you know, but, but we can't use that. We can't, we can't use it as an excuse when God is showing us. Now, it's one thing when you don't know, but when you know, now you know. And when we know, then now we are responsible and we are accountable to deal with it. Yeah. You know, really, when truth comes, that's a place for us to be excited. I'm telling you, y'all, I love truth. Now, I, I will say to you, sometimes it's hard when I'm, you know, even with my leaders, sometimes it's, it's, it's I, when I say hard, I don't mean that it's a hard truth where they're just stabbing you. You know, take this truth. I'm not saying that. But when you are used to being a way, and, and, and maybe, for instance, you didn't see it or you didn't know it. Woo, that thing could sting. <laughs> Woo. But no different than when you take a, I don't do, I don't do sodas anymore. But when you, when you drink a Pepsi, when I used to drink a Pepsi, and it's good and cold, and you pop the top of a Twister bottle, you drink down that Pepsi, and you get that burn. Woo. They be like, whoa. It take you back for me. be like, whoa. Woo. Let's let that burn sink in for a second, right? And it's no different when you hear truth. When we get the truth because we know it's coming from a good place. First of all, it's coming from God through our vessel. And we're receiving that. Hallelujah. We're receiving that in love. But when we receive that truth, you feel the burn. <laughs> feel the burn. Hallelujah. Don't let your heart be offended. Feel the burn. But if by chance, you know, you know, maybe you had a moment of being offended. Come on, let's get unoffended. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because just as quick as we got offended, you can be quick to say, God, forgive me. Forgive me, God. I'm sorry. I repent for that. I renounce that. I renounce that spirit of offense. Hallelujah. Because God, I'm moving. In order for me to get to the next place, I got to be willing to let go of this. I got to be willing to, 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 to do this over. I got to be willing. Hallelujah. Surrendering is about being willing to allow God to do what he needs to do. To allow God to, to uproot that of what needs to be uprooted. Hallelujah. To kill what needs to be killed. To deal with what needs to be dealt with in our lives. Glory be unto the name of the Lord. But we got to allow that. We got to allow that. That's what surrendering is. It's not, I used to think that surrendering means I'm surrendering in a moment. You know, when, when the preacher, you know, call us up and you know he, he preached a good word and, and now our hearts are, are, are you know are melting and we're like okay you know maybe tears are coming and we're coming to the altar and we're surrendering in that moment thank you father but i want you to understand that even though we get to that place we're at that place that we should be but i want you to understand that when you're surrendering you know, unlike myself, it's not in a moment, you know, but that was just not knowing, you know, and that's okay. Cause I could know now that surrender is not just a moment. Surrendering is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It is surrender. I surrender every day. What is the scripture in James four and seven? It says, therefore submit yourselves, surrender yourselves unto God. As we do, we resist the devil. Surrendering, submitting is resisting the devil because we are submit. We are, the action is we are rejecting the enemy and we are accepting God, his principle, his way, what he is saying, what he wants, what he desires. You know, our hearts want to please God. Thank you, Father. What a great place. What a good, great place. You know, but we got to value. We got to value and not be offended. Oh, how the enemy takes great joy in knowing I can pluck your violin string and you get upset or you get offended or you feel some kind of way. 
Oh, but how you give him back his violin strings when we unpluck the, the string and say, God, I thank you for this truth. Hallelujah. Let not my heart be offended. Glory to God. But I receive this truth. I receive it with open arms. I receive it and I welcome your truth. Come on, we got to let, even though it may stink a little, we got to just, oh God, I thank you for it. Because I know this is helping me. I'm growing. That's what we want to do. We want to grow and grow and grow. And can I say to you, you're not too old to grow. You know, sometimes at the salon and different places we go, we hear people saying, oh, you know how old the people are. They sit in their way, they sot in their ways. You know, and many times people, people say, I first want to say, I'm side of my ways and I ain't about to change. Like, really? Really? Maybe that person doesn't understand that with the power of God, you can change. Maybe that person doesn't understand that if you have a heart to surrender to God and know that God can change you if you want to be changed, maybe, maybe it will be different. You know, but many times, you know, there are other people that decide, hey, I like being this way. You know, and I know that sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, there are some people who like to be like they are. Their payoff is if I'm an angry person or I'm a mad person or if I'm a person and you do something and I get to tell you off or whatever the case may be. The payoff is they sit down in that. You know, they feel empowered because I've just cursed you for all you are worth to them <laughs> or I just told you a piece of my mind you know it it, 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 it it to them it feels empowering you know I felt good after I said this and the excuse is because I was able to get this off my chest you know not really realizing what's really happening you know but you know we can't be people that decide I'm signing my ways and I'm saying sight <laughs> but you know to be set in a way meaning to be set in a lie to be set in a lie from the enemy that is beneath the standard of God we don't want that we've lived that way long enough we can't be Christians we can't be people of God that are said no because as Christians we are ever growing we're ever maturing the more where I am today at the 10 8, listen, my number is 22 I don't know what your number is but my number is 22 so I'm gonna be 22 until I'm until <laughs> I like the number 22. So I'm gonna choose that number. But you know, for as long as we live, we are to forever be changing. You know, and when I say changing, evolving, being processed by God, allowing Him to take us from who we used to be to who He wants us to be, who we who we were thinking that it was okay to be or who we were thinking that maybe this is it and this is just how my life is going to be. Now we can know, no, that is not the truth. That is not who I am. So the real truth of the matter is, no, we're not too old. We're not too young. We're just the right place. We're just the right age to be surrendered to God. Doesn't matter. You can be 9 to 5. You can be 25 you can be five with a heart to be surrendered to God and that pleases God there's nothing more better amazing and awesome than pleasing God then then you know he loves us know that he loves us and you know he cherish he cherishes us <laughs> you know he is not condemning us and he is not, you know, looking at us with eyes of judgment. You know, he's not looking at us that way. He loves us and he celebrates us and he wants us to know that he's proud of us. And, you know, we have to be encouraged in that. We have to receive that and we have to know that by faith. No matter what the enemy says, we have to know that. And as we're knowing that, we also have to know that everything that comes from him is good. So, we have to know and recognize that anything that tells us differently is the enemy trying to offend our hearts. Anything that tells us differently, flat out, is a lie from hell. That part is a lie from 
hell. And the enemy has won too many games. We have allowed him, maybe we just didn't know, you know, maybe we didn't know we just was passive and didn't want to fight or didn't want to, you know, do what we needed to do to, to process. Yes, the process is, it stings, you know, sometimes it does, you know, because there's some things that God has to work, give us some new muscles in. So we gotta, we gotta change those old muscles. Those old muscles are lazy, you know, they're just sitting there. <laughs> And as those old muscles are just sitting there, it's like, okay, as we're strength training these muscles, we're building. You see that how we, now I'm just doing that. We you know, of course, you're not doing that fast, but I'm just saying, as we're building, whatever was there, it's building muscle. You see the muscles get to start sitting up. Y'all see that muscle? <laughs> Hallelujah. But what's important is the muscle in the spirit realm, the spiritual realm. We're building muscle. That's what God wants to do with us. So hearing the lies of the enemy, no longer. Nope. We completely do not receive the lies of the enemy. We will not hear what he is saying. We will not listen. Don't even let the enemy finish out his sentence. Don't. 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 I will not I will not. God loves me. Hallelujah. And if he's sending a word, my word, which he is, God is sending my word through my anointed vessel of God. I receive every word that God is saying. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's it. It really is that simple. That's it. Hallelujah. We want to get planted so that God can you know that's that's where we're eating that's where our our meal is you know and i was sharing with um the group last week that you know be sure to go back and listen to these messages go back you know as you're sharing the message be sure that you're listening back to the message because you know you don't just eat one time a week there's seven days in a week we don't just eat on tuesdays and then we don't eat again until next tuesday I'm, I'm, I'm talking about physically, literally. You don't eat that way. You eat at least three meals a day. Sometimes with snacks in between, but at least three meals a day. Okay? And that is seven days a week. You know, you would starve to death if you only ate one meal on Tuesday. You know? And many times we are starving spiritually because the meal that God has placed here for us. Nothing wrong with teachings. Okay, hear me in the spirit. There's nothing wrong with teachings, but you want to eat the meal that God has prepared for you because that is where your word is. Hallelujah. That is where my word is. So we want to be sure before all else that we are hearing our word. And then we have to be careful not to hear so many other words that now my word from God where I am planted has now been entangled and confused because now I don't know what I need to listen to okay be careful be careful where you're planted that's where God is giving you your word and we did a whole um, two lessons one Sunday um, last last Sunday and then Tuesday night teach was a follow-up on um, being planted and how to be planted so if you hadn't listened to those and, you know, you need to be planted, good foundation with the power of God, with the anointing of God is. Hallelujah. Go back and listen to those messages. But as we're moving forward, be sure to hear. Because many times as you hear this word, you know, when you go back and hear, you're going to hear so much more that you didn't hear the first time. And that is God continuing to speak to you. Hallelujah. So let not my heart be offended. Hallelujah. Well, I've enjoyed nature and the birds chirping and singing. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Beautiful afternoon. Oh, I'm loving this. Maybe we'll do this some more. <laughs> we'll do this some more. But Father, we just... Thank you right now as we come to this place of prayer. We thank you so much. Oh God, we thank you for resurrection power, resurrection life, death. And death, many times people feel like death has the final say. 
but death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. You are the risen king in our lives right now, today. Not only did you rise Resurrection Sunday, we celebrated, you know, but you, you, you are risen in our lives right now. Right now, you are king, you are Lord, you reign supreme on the throne of our hearts, on the throne of our lives. And Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your messages. We thank you for the life of your word. We thank you for our leaders. Thank you, God. Thank you for surrendered leaders, leaders that are surrendered to you. We thank you for our leaders that have said yes, we th a, a, a real yes. We thank you for our leaders that are living a true and surrendered life before you, God. We thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. We thank you. And Father, we're choosing right now to not be offended, but to be in a place where we value the word of God coming through the mouths of your vessel. We value, we hold it dear to us. We treasure the word of God. We take it, we take that truth as truth because it is truth. And we apply it to our lives even now. We don't try to do these things on our own, God, but we come running to you, running, running, running to you and saying, God, we give you this. Help me with it. Help me to be new. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's not only men, that's women, any person be in Christ. We are new creatures. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The Bible says that he gives grace to the humble. It takes spirit of humility to not be offended. Hallelujah. It takes a spirit of humility to not live in pride city. Thank you, Father. It takes a spirit of humility. Glory to God to humble ourselves and to and to receive be planted and receive be planted where the anointing and the power of God is and receive truly receive hallelujah be students of the word of God be students hallelujah be humble as our vessels are speaking and our vessels are giving us our food our meal glory to God we receive it we receive it we receive it humbly, humbly. Thank you, Father. The song says, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Oh, how I long to be like him. He's so meek and lowly. Come on, talk about humility. He's humble and holy. Oh, how I long. Oh, how I long. Oh, how I long to be like him. Can I encourage you today that we no longer have to long to be like Jesus now. But it's just a simple decision. I want to be like you. And I'm making a decision to walk like you, to be, to surrender to you so that I can. So I just want to share a quick scripture with you. And the scripture says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life, abundant life. And that's according to Proverbs 22 and 4. Luke 14 and 11, it says, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will will be exalted first Peter 5 and 6 it says therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time so it behooves us it pays us you know there's another scripture that says and God gives grace and more grace and more grace to the humble so we want to be humble people we want to be people that is humble just like Jesus was we want to be like him we want to look like him we want to be like him in every way. And humility pleases God. And so, Father, we thank you now for these hearts that are coming before you. These hearts that are here tonight that are saying, God, I want to be like you for real, for real. No longer just singing it and not doing it. No longer just saying it and not being about that life. Hallelujah. 
We are surrendered people. We are a revival army. We are revival carriers in this army of the Lord. We're soldiers. Come on. We're revival soldiers in the army of the Lord. Thank you, Father. And God is not, he can't do nothing with weak soldiers. Hallelujah. We got to be strengthened in this army. Glory to God. We got to be able to take the attacks. Hallelujah. Persecution. Being offended. Hallelujah. Even when it's not for righteousness sake. We got to be able to take some stuff. Even when it's not coming from a good place. Even when it's somebody, the enemy may send somebody to offend us. We got to be the one to decide. I will not be offended. Glory to God. Even if it was meant to hurt me. Even if it was meant to stumble me. It will not. Because I have the power. God has given us power and authority over every enemy, over every lie, over every scheme, over every work of the enemy. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have the power. We got to walk like we have the power. We got to talk like we have power. Hallelujah. But we do this humbly, humbly, humbly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. So for those of us who are, you know, we're, we're still being processed in this thing called humility. I really don't know of anybody who, who arrive, hallelujah, but it's a daily walk. You know, there are different levels of humility. Maybe some others have reached different levels of humility and that's okay. Hallelujah, but we don't look down on the ones who are coming. Thank you, Father. We don't look down on those ones who are coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we want pure hearts before you. Oh, God, so we offer our hearts to you. The heart right, the heart that we have right now, we offer it to you. And we say, God, do with this heart what you want to do. Make it, mold it the way you want this heart to be. Hallelujah. We give you permission tonight, this evening. We give you permission to make and to mold our hearts into the beautiful hearts you want them to be. Hallelujah. Come on, we're not giving up because we missed it a few times. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We don't give up on God because he hasn't given up on us. Hallelujah. And we continue to keep going. God, I offer this heart to you. We offer our life to you, a surrendered life to you. Wherever there are bad spots in our hearts, wherever we've made bad decisions, Wherever we've done things that were not pleasing to you, God, take this heart. We surrender it to you. Do with it what you want to do. Do with it what you please. But God, we know that as you take out those things that need to be taken out, stripped out of this heart, hallelujah, we know that you're giving this heart back to us. And this heart is beautiful. It's pure, it's lowly, it loves, it is merciful, it is compassionate. Thank you, Lord. Come on, that's the real heart of God. That's what being like God is. And so, thank you, Father, that we choose to be processed. We want to be processed. We want to be processed. We want to be processed. Remove the hurt, God. Hallelujah. We give you permission. Glory to God. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. And so I speak now to every hurt. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare every heart, every hurt that has your heart the way it is. Every pain, every wound, every traumatic experience that you have undergone, that you went through. I remove it now by the power of the living God. I remove it. I say it must go. It must leave you now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Every mean, evil word spoken evil or, 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 or to you, many even being called evil. Hallelujah. I remove those painful words from you now. Critical words, maybe even been spoken by loved ones. For some of us, maybe parents. Hallelujah. Someone that was very dear to you spoke harsh, critical words to you, and it caused your heart to be hard. Hallelujah. I remove it from you now by the power of the living God. I speak it to go now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every offense, 
Hallelujah. Maybe there were persons that spoke intentionally to you. Their intention was to hurt you. Their intention was to chew you. Maybe it was. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I remove that hurt from you now. I remove that offense from you now in Jesus' name. And we make a decision to forgive. To forgive them. Hallelujah. Because we can't be humble and walk in unforgiveness. We can't be humble and walk with a, an affected heart, an afflicted heart with resentment and bitterness. We can't do that with jealousy and competition. We can't do that. Hallelujah. We can't. We can't. And whatever the thing is that we didn't see, God is showing us now. And he'll continue to show us as we humble ourselves and as we value the, the, the anointed vessels that are bringing these words to us. Hallelujah. Hear. We choose to hear God. We choose to receive what you're saying. Hallelujah. And we receive. Not only we're removing those old, cold, stony, offended hearts, afflicted hearts, hurting hearts, bleeding hearts. We remove them now. Every blister, every bruise in the heart. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can go to the market and you can see where there are blood blisters, where blood is there in the meat. Hallelujah. I want you to imagine seeing those blisters of hurt and pain and rejection. Hallelujah. And abuse in the heart. And it's because of those things that when certain things are said and done, we become offended. Hallelujah. God, in Jesus' name, I remove those from you now. Hallelujah. I remove them right now in Jesus' name. The power of the living God removes them. His anointing that destroys every yoke removes them from you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed. Hallelujah. I speak complete healing to you now in the matchless name of Jesus. Receive it now. Receive this anointing now in Jesus' name. Receive it. It's yours. It's your inheritance and it belongs to you. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Father, we send strength, hallelujah, to your people to walk, hallelujah, in the power of God, to walk in their calling, to walk in their identity, to walk in their authority that, God, you have given to them. In the name of Jesus. And, Father, every place, every empty place that's in us, where those hurts and pains have now been removed out of this house, out of this temple. Father, now we surrender. We ask you to fill us. Even the more I lose, hallelujah, the power of the living God be unto you. Now fill you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet completely. May there be no vacancy. Hallelujah. May you not be found swept and clean, but may you be found filled with the spiritual things of God. Filled in prayer. Filled in the scripture. Filled in the word. Filled in fellowship with God. Filled with speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. And even those that are desiring the fire. Just, just, just raise your hands to receive. Posture yourself now to receive. I now in Jesus name baptize you in the fire of the living God. Receive his fire now. Receive it now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I speak complete healing to you now. I speak complete healing to your mind. I speak complete healing to your soul, to your spirit, to your heart now. I speak complete healing to the to your ears to hear the things of God. Let the let God's voice be louder than any other voice. I speak it now. In Jesus name hallelujah I speak clarity even in the eyes now in Jesus name that you would no longer see through a, a distorted dirty filter hallelujah meaning the filter of the enemy what the enemy wants us to see but we now I, I completely loose glory to God that your eyes be clear to see spiritually as we humble ourselves hallelujah God is lifting just like Saul he said that something like scales fell from his eyes uh, may the scales hallelujah fall from your eyes now in Jesus name and may you see clearly may you see clearly no more confusion no more foggy cloudiness hallelujah but may you see clearly glory to God may you hear clearly may you move hallelujah 
purely before God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And I lose to you life. Live, 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 live. You who have decided there is nothing to live for. That's a lie from the enemy. I speak life to you now. Hallelujah. Every lie of the enemy that life is not worth living, I remove that from you now. I break the curse of every lie, of every agreement with the enemy. Hallelujah. I break it now in Jesus' name. And I speak to you, live, live, live now in Jesus' name. He said, I came that you, 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 you will have life and that you will have life more abundantly. All you have to do is believe and receive it. Hallelujah. Come where you can grow. Come where you can be trained. Come where you can be taught. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Receive his love. Hallelujah. I send it to you now. Receive his love. Receive his joy, his peace, and his happiness, and abundant life to you all now, forevermore, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's an amazing God. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. And he wants to live through you. He wants to shine through you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I send this impartation, glory to God, of his anointing to be unto you, even as you go forth. Receive, 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 even if, even as you go forth to witness, hallelujah, to pray for people, hallelujah. May his anointing, his spirit be with you. Glory to God, may your light for God shine so brightly, hallelujah. Glory to God, that people notice and they stand at attention and hear what God is saying through you. In Jesus' name, receive that anointing, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. I've enjoyed you so very much. Know that God has done a mighty, awesome, amazing work this evening. He has. He has. He has. Know that as you go forth, know by faith. You have to receive it. You have to know that you have it. You have to know that you have it. And you have to walk in the things of God. Thank you, Father. You have to walk in the things of God. You have to be intentional. Hallelujah, the things that I'm looking at. Be intentional, the company you keep. Be intentional, glory to God. The radio, the station that you live. Be, be intentional, the conversations that you're having. Be intentional to be in your word, to study. Be intentional to fellowship him with, with him, commune with him daily throughout your day. Be intentional to have fun with Jesus. Jesus is so fun, guys. He's so fun. <laughs> He's so fun. Oh, my goodness. He's so awesome and he's so amazing. And he wants you to know that you are too. He loves you. He loves you so very much. So that's it for this evening. I enjoyed you so much. We're going to have to do this again. This is different. I like different. I like shaking things up. You know, I like color. What a beautiful background, right? Beautiful nature. <laughs> so awesome. So amazing. But listen, um, I want to invite you to be sure to join us every Sunday morning for our fresh fire prayer call every sunday morning where um you can dial in um, the information will be in the description of this video you feel free to dial in we love being able to chat um, and be able to to be there for the dial in sometimes we we have an after live and we talking after the the morning prayer and and the the tuesday night teach sometimes but you can dial in you can also meet us right here live on youtube for the prayer call as well um, also too we want to invite you to our revival nights every sunday where you get to come and join us in person and you get to encounter god oh my goodness and experience him in such a mighty powerful way in person glory to god under the shadow of the almighty god Hallelujah. And we're so thankful for what he's doing at our Revival Fire Nights. And then we also want to invite you right back here on Tuesday Night Teach, where God is moving so powerfully, so amazingly. Hallelujah. As he's transforming lives, as he is equipping, he's teaching us, and he is training us in this Revival Fire, how to be Revival Carriers, how to move forward as soldiers, Revival Army, and Revival Christians. Hallelujah. 
in the way of the Lord. So we invite you, hallelujah, to come and join us. Be here if you have a testimony. God has blessed you. And you know, there, there you have a testimony. Share it with us. You can write into us at revivalfire at gmail.com. We are so excited to hear. We want to share with the world what God has done in your life. The power, his, manifest, his manifestation, his demonstration of the power that he has done and is doing in your life. So be sure to share with us. We're releasing you into your night. Know that God loves you so very much. He's crazy about you. In short, he's nuts about you. <laughs> he's nuts about you. He loves you. Hallelujah. He loves you so very much. And I love you just as well. Have a wonderful night. And God bless you and all of your endeavors and all of your encounters in Jesus' name. Amen.